Welcome to Demons Discuss, the unofficial podcast about the All Souls universe and the topics that orbit it. We are your hosts, Angela Jean and Valerie. I am Valerie. And with me is Angela and Jean. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello. And what are we talking about? After Con Thoughts. Yay! Hey. We're back, baby. Whoa! <laughs> I heard a little. <laughs> Be careful. I know, I know. And as usual, I did get my uh, beat Valerie up after uh, All Souls Con because, you know, I had a week of sickness, but it was after I got back. So that's progress. Next year, we'll work on doing it better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So... I guess here's the part where we talk to you about Patreon and patronage. And this podcast is brought to you by our Patreon sponsors and their listeners just like you. Talk to us, Jean, because I've run out of words. <laughs> You've run out of words already. Our patrons get twice as much demons because yeah. you'll have an extra show on the off week. Yeah. When you join our patron squad, depending upon the level, there's swag available, our totes, our, our smaller pouches, whatever Valerie dreams up when we're out at events, stickers and magnets and all kinds of fun stuff. And But most of all, you get to spend more time with us and our crazy lives and our fandom lives and just be part of the family. You even get extra stuff because our patrons this time got both of our panels. Yes, they did. In full. We'll put, play portions of that later on in this episode. But yes, if you're a Patreon patron, you got to hear our whole panel while we were in the UK in Cardiff. There's that. And so if you're interested, go to patreon.com slant demons discuss. Yay. So yay. Let's talk about it. Oh my gosh. Where to even start? At the end or the beginning? How do you want to do this? Let's start at the beginning. Let's do the unhamish. Yes, the yes. anti hamish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the beginning. I mean, how far back are we talking about? From the airport? Yeah. Oh, oh, getting, getting dropped off by <laughs> our driver uh, <laughs> in Cardiff. <laughs> oh, you well, know. Oh, God. Yeah. And like, we didn't. Okay. Can, Picked can, up can, by our driver in Cardiff. Yeah. Can or we? At Heathrow. At Heathrow. Can we even talk about the the fact that none of our passports got stamped? No. I, oh. I feel wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it was terrible. I mean, what was that about? It was very efficient coming into England, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Nothing to declare? Okay, go through this big wide hallway that everybody's walking through. Okay, this through. big empty <laughs> empty hallway where there is no one and just some tables. It was very yeah. bizarre. Pause a second, though. <laughs> I mean, to timestamp this episode, just yesterday, the whole custom system went down. So imagine not having those computers and no people oh my <laughs> to, God. to man people getting through. Oh, my God. They'd have to recall from like different airports everywhere. Yeah. Oh, my God. Every, yeah. It would be all hands on deck for sure. I would still be waiting, of course. I'd be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'd, be in the, you'd be in the visa line yeah. for inexplicable reasons. <laughs> Wait, that's on the way back. Yeah. We'll, that's we'll get to that. Back. Okay. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I know I went through and I was like, okay, I'm going to talk to this customs agent and he's going to stamp my passport. I'm going to have my first new stamp and my, my new passport. Here we go. And then, uh, yeah, sad trombone. I'm confronted with this machine that says, hello, Valerie Grendel, scan your shit. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then it takes a weird picture of you. And then yeah. these plexiglass doors just open up. I'm like, yeah. that's it. I get to come into England just because. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think that I think it took longer for us to get like get the money exchanged. Yeah, to be yeah that's right. <laughs> That was a more rigorous process. Yeah, that was I, that was interesting because then you walk through all these hallways. You, finally, I'm released to the free world, and there there were you two. Yes. So, yay! That was yeah. cool. Yeah, and we had already walked across two terminals, rode, <laughs> rode a train, <laughs> and somebody somebody recognized our voices on the train. And yeah, <laughs> introduced themselves. Uh, Are you Kate, kidding yeah, me? No, yeah, yeah. it was Kate. Kate and her mom were not chamomile and clove. Kate, another Kate. And uh -huh. Her mom were actually on the train and going all the way into London before they came into Cardiff. But the train, apparently, the train between the terminals is also the train that takes you into into town. So oh. she, was, she was just lovely, and it was surprising and 
Yeah. Kind of kind of weird. <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> that whole day was kind of bizarre because none of us got any sleep on the plane. We didn't take our own advice. No. no. The, the steward kept insisting Angela and I were sisters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> British Air, uh, Oliver. Shouts to Oliver. He took good care of us, though. Yeah, he did. Uh, British Airways, Oliver. Oh. Shouts to you. Oh, we've got to tell this the story about Angela's nickname. Oh, the vandal- yeah. The vandalizer. <laughs> oh, tell the story. Yes. Tell the story. You could, you could tell the story, Jane. <laughs> Come back and we, we sit in our seat and they're getting ready to take off and totally full flight. And on British Airways, they've got a double door on all of their overhead cargo bins. It's like kind of a not net, it's like a, a hard plastic net one that clicks okay. first and then the door we're all familiar with. So they get everything loaded up and we're taxiing to take off. And Oliver's, our, the steward assigned our section is in the jump seat facing us as this is all happening. Uh-huh. And then I swear it was like Jerry We decided to hop the flight with us because... <laughs> <laughs> the door above Angela's head swings open and then the net door swings open. And of course, this is like as the plane is like kind of shuddering and trying to get off the ground as, as it's really ascending, ascending and, you know, picking up speed. And Oliver is like making these hand gestures, like pushing up. Angela's pushing up and he's like, and I'm like the only one paying attention to what's going on. And she's kind of thinking, does he want me to like stand up and fix it or not do anything? And then he he's like shaking his head and waving his hands and he finally gets up out of his jump seat as we're ascending and it's probably a pretty steep 45 50 degree angle and he like comes down and shuts the sh- thing and then kind of it's like he's climbing up a mountain to get back to his seat as this, the plane's <laughs> taking off and then oh, later man. on he, he go ahead angela you know i say his his motion was confusing it was either shut it because i was trying to stand up and shut it which would have taken two seconds and the girl in front of me had her arms above her head because she didn't want to get caught in the head yeah she was cowering so i'm like is he saying shut it with his hand or is he saying yeah, sit it down? Like, it's like put your hands in the air like you don't care. I'm like, what does this mean? Yeah. <laughs> what, what? Exactly. That was pretty much the gesture he was making. And we're like, oh my God. Do you want me to figure What do you want me to? Ah, did I just. And then later on, he's like, yeah, we'll just call you the vandalizer. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. But it was. Well. You guys had a nice adventure on the way. <laughs> always. We always do. Yes. Always. <laughs> we were first in line when the when they opened up the check in counter too. <laughs> Yeah, oh. <laughs> that's pretty freaking hilarious. Oh, I mean, my flight was so uneventful. The only thing I took note of was I forgot how much people in the UK say sorry, 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 <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, instead of in lieu of excuse me or pardon uh, me. I gotta go pee or pardon me. It's sorry. Uh, I have to use the loo. And I'm like, okay. Sorry. And and the toilet. The, said, I, the, way, the way they actually refer to it as the toilet. I'm like, wow. No, this lady said loo. Okay. <laughs> she said, I have to loo- use the loo. So she did that. I mean, She must have had the bladder of a bird because <laughs> she got up like six different times and said sorry each time. And I'm not making fun of her, but I totally forgot that's part of the regular lexicon. And when Wendy, or Canadian Wendy, Hey, Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Uh, when she says sorry, the Canadian sorry. It's totally different. It's totally different. <laughs> but used in the same context. Sorry. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. 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 <laughs> and then we did yeah. proceed to overuse <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> the rest of the trip. <laughs> and laugh every time I saw it. <laughs> oh, it's because everywhere you couldn't unhear it now. Yeah. It's like everybody who said it. It's like we just look at each other. It's like, oh, sorry. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> when we were, when you and I were in Joe Malone and Angela was waiting for us outside and the lady said, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, sorry. We burst out <laughs> laughing. By that point in time, we just burst out laughing. I know. I felt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> she was so nice in Joe Malone. <laughs> All right. So uh, we pick up our ride from our driver. I forgot his name because he was rather taciturn. Did he even he tell us his name? I, I'm trying to well, recall. We got a text saying so-and-so is going to pick you up. We did get a text yeah. from the car company. It was almost like we had like this weird bodyguard type guy assigned to us who was not supposed <laughs> to actually say, talk to us. I yeah. appreciate one million percent non-chatty drivers. This guy took it to the next level. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was almost to a disturbing level. He was almost like a Buckingham Palace guard. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Very we much so. We would ask him direct questions, and he's, I know he was thinking stupid Americans. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because then I was like, okay, guys, so we are 113 miles from Cardiff. And then uh, Gene's like, kilometers. I'm like, no, I seem to remember miles. And the guy's like, under his breath, he's like, it's miles. I'm like, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we had a nice uh, three, almost three hour drive to Cardiff from there. Uh, we opted not to take the train because it was more cost effective for us to call a car yeah. and have us transported to Cardiff. <laughs> and then we got into town a little bit early prior to check-in. Yeah, oh, that place we, we found, this place we stumbled on was just so great. It's good because we were all fucking on our last leg and we were dragging our big ass bags throughout town. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like homeless people. <laughs> what was it called? Milk and honey? <laughs> Milk and honey. Milk and Cardiff, tea, I think. Yeah. Wasn't it? Or milk and I tea? I thought it was milk and honey, but it could be either. Uh, I don't know. I still have their card because we never went back to return. No, I know. Well, they closed well, they early. Cl- they closed too early. Yeah. They were a daytime place, but the owner was, the guy who waited on us turned out to be the owner and he's got five of them. <laughs> yeah. Very nice guy. Awesome guy. I don't remember his name. He did. Holy crap. Did he introduce us? I don't know if he told us his name. He did. He did. He did. He did. We were so okay. jet lagged by then though. <laughs> or I know. Like deprived or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember very much. The food I do was remember delicious. the food was delicious. I do remember him bringing the food and the tea and the coffee and making us comfortable and moving all the tables around because we didn't want to really disrupt anything. He's like, no, 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 and he re- no, no, no. rearranged Take a load off stuff for <laughs> us. He was very, very nice. And, and we he were... asked us where we're from yeah. and everything like and that. And he kind of gave us some advice on the footballer crowd that was going to happen because we were right across from Principality Stadium and yeah. AC Milan and Manchester United were going to be playing the next day or a couple days later yeah a couple Saturday. days later yeah we weren't prepared for that crowd but that's later on yes, that's later it on. Is. yes and then what else did we do oh let's see we checked into our flat and then we took off <sighs> exploring we went walking yes when we refused to go to sleep and Angela made it Yay. I did she's doing it I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like that I was feeling forced to stay awake but I did it we certainly did it man, we, but Wednesday we really got our second win too because that's that was the gin night. Yes, we did. Oh, yeah. I, we, I still had on my grubby clothes from the from the, the trip Flight. over. I think I yeah. just changed my shirt and we just grabbed some gin and that did the trick. Uh, in addition to the three lattes I had at the place we just oh, mentioned. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, was, was that the night of the pizza rejection? Yeah, that was gin and juice and pizza rejection and Penny Royal. Penny yes, Royal. It was. Yeah, yeah, it was. Okay, so gin and juice. Go ahead and explain this place, Jean. It was all gin. It was a uh, 140 different gins. It's also... It was one of Deb's recommends. Yes. What, what was it? Yeah. Yes. It's a, co- a coffee bar during the day, uh, kind of across the Cardiff market from uh, Barker Coffee. I think they're all owned by the same folks. It's strictly a gin bar in the evening. 140 different gins. They're matched up with very specific or recommended tonics. They have a, a whole tonic bar of different kind of fever tree and other brands and flavors of gin. Mm. And they do pairing and you can do different different kind of things. And we all opted to do two, pick two each and went from there. Yeah. And we, we two fisted with the gin. Yeah, and we <laughs> sat in Deb's writing corner. Yep. We found Deb's little sure writing did. corner in the back, complete with the cute little uh, vintage lamp and the view out the window and proceeded to get schnockered. Yeah, the pictures on the ceilings. That's what I remember about the yes, posters. Oh, it was yes, all the yes, rock and roll looking the rock up. posters, yeah. And Their yeah. menus were huge. Stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, the gin menus. Yes. It was insane. Oh, my God. Pages and pages was like an encyclopedia I mean, of every kind of gin and tonic you could think yeah, of. Yeah, and there was probably at least seven different categories they put yes. them in. Yes, as much as yeah. we like trying the different ones, and I would still go back and try even different ones, More. I think we yeah. all agree it's like coming home, just a regular gin and tonic. Gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. Let's not get crazy. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a palate cleanser, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, let, let's not get crazy. Yeah. Sometimes I would go, uh, let's make it a double gin and tonic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's do this right. So, yeah, that was that was good. 
And then we got hungry. Yeah. And then I was going to say of the gins, of course, we found one that was in a demon, demon slash devil bottle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. That fallen angel was delicious. If I can ever find it again, I'm going to buy me some. Can I can I just give a shout to Lisa, Lister Lisa, who was following our, our travels and she tried gin and tonic for the first time. It wasn't exactly her cup of tea, but our my advice to you is try and try again. Yes. And <laughs> you will find, she's going you to will soldier your along thing. and try again. <laughs> Right. Listen, not all the tonics are to everybody's taste. You know, not even I all the have gins. preferences. Not all the gins, you know. I like Tangare because I love the juniper taste. Now, if you don't like juniper so much, there's other ones like Hendrix and they're smoother. They're I like feeling the punch in the gut, yeah. you know, just like blah. See, I, I, you know? I trained on Tangare and for some reason, I, I think it's... It, to a certain extent, if you're t- you're either Tangeray or Bombay, because I just don't care yeah. for Bombay at all. Bombay is not my thing at all. No, Mm-mm. you have to train on Tangeray if you're going to be hardcore like yeah, that. But, <laughs> but, I, but, I will t- but I will tell you that the Hendrix Midsummer Solstice is amazing. It is yeah. very good. Yeah. yeah. Well, before I left, I got a bottle of the Botanist. That's a little bit more towards a Bombay style than a Tangeray style, and it's it, for being advertised as being very herbal and botanical. It's just hot. It's rather gentle. It's no, it's just hot. It's it f- almost feels like it's got a higher alcohol content than usual. Well, yeah, but it's rather gentle going down. There's no throat punch. Oh, you know oh, what I mean? mean the yeah. Botanist or <laughs> the Botanist or yeah, I think so. I th- I. I Maybe it's just I was sensitive to the the heat because all I could taste was the heat. It was kind of a throat punch for me. So give the give the comparison between Tangeray, Bombay, Hendrix, and then on the way end of the other spectrum, Ransom, which Eugene, you and I like as well. Oh, I love that. For me, Tangeray is like the quintessential gin gin. It's got like a little bit of a juniper. It's your basic yeah. bitch gin. Juniper. <laughs> Whichever disappoints. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Juniper um, not a lot of alcohol heat on the palate. You're always going to know that you've got gin in with your tonic because the tonic won't overwhelm it, even if you're using a cheap tonic. Uh, no, yeah. Bomb- the Tangeray will always shine through. Yeah, Bombay, to me, it's almost like a vodka of gins. It's not super juniper It's not super herbal. I can Compared to like if you're a Jack Daniels fan, you like that whiskey flavor and and versus like a gentleman Jack or a single barrel Jack. It's not, Do you know what I mean? not yeah. subtle at all. It's, it's just it's yeah. Yeah. Uh, you drink Bombay to get fucked up, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least I yeah, that's how I, I see it. It's like it's not something you're gonna sit and savor and appreciate, but that's just my power. Yeah, you drink it with a straw. Yeah. <laughs> No, no. Regular Hendrix, I think it, it, you're going to get more of an herbal. I don't really drink regular Hendrix. I know Dr. Shelley is a huge fan and she loves it with ginger beer. Yeah, so it's I feel good. It's, and it's, it is good. And it's got a really good, I think it's got the herbals really stand up to something like a ginger beer and really complement it. I know I'm a huge fan of their Midsummer Solstice, which is more a little, little more floral yeah. than the regular Hendrix, but it is very herbal as well. And I just love that with straight up fever futonic. Although I'm tempted to try it with uh, some elderflower lemonade. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. which Trader Joe's carries because that the, just strikes me as something tasty. The regular Hendrix, though, I, I never had tried it with ginger beer until Dr. Mm-hmm. Shelley and Nola, but and that's delicious. But normally you would just have Hendrix and tonic with a cucumber, not a lime. Yeah. 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 Hendrix, wasn't Hendrix the stuff we were drinking with our Pims? Pims cup. Yeah. Yep. Which is a whole other story we'll get to later on in our, our <laughs> adventures. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then I would say with the ransom, ransom's a sipping gin. You can have yes. like ransom on ransom on the rocks and not bother with the tonic or anything. It's although we did have it with ice cream. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's right. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> the the Fossbenders. Yes. Uh, oh, that's that was a debacle always to be. Uh, yeah, I would think that's a, enough of a primer yeah. anyway for you guys yes. to get started. Yeah. So uh, I think it's a kind of a universally refreshing mm-hmm. and, it, and it's, cocktail, and it's it's a good medicinal against malaria too. Let's not forget that. Uh, <laughs> we can right. write you a prescription think- for it. <laughs> I think that's what staved off all the illness while I was there. Yes. All the, gin. The, medi- the, the medicinal <laughs> properties of gin. Yes, yes. Maybe you're just it's going through the- withdrawals. <laughs> <laughs> could be. Could be. Could be. All right. So let's talk about our dinner search mm. that night. Jesus. We just wanted to fill our bellies and then get a good night's sleep and start afresh the next day. But that wasn't yes. to be. 
No. No. <laughs> no. So we're calling out the place. Was it called Zizzy? Yes. Zizzy. Zizzy. yes. Which was right on uh, the main drag. A, t- a chain pizza the, joint in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Next to, right, pretty much next to the market. Yep. Yep. Now, we walked into this big empty restaurant, wood fire pizza, going in the back so we could smell it. We got this pizza taste in our heads. We're ready to go. And we walk up and what did they say? They said, oh, uh, are you booked? No, oh, we just asked for a table solely. for three and they had just seated somebody and they said, oh, well, we're fully. Uh, do you have a reservation? Well, no. Well, we're fully yeah. booked. There's two tables yeah. of people there and that's it. Yeah. Booking Zoli. So. And if you know wood yeah. fire pizza, you can make a pizza like in 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah no shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's all they were. They were basically a wood fire pizza place. Yeah. I mean, we weren't looking for the quintessential Cardiff experience with our or food fine or dining or whatever. anything. Or fine dining. We just wanted to sit down and eat. Holy fucking shit. No. Are you kidding me? Empty tables and you're just going to turn people away? Um, I I don't know. What was my initial impression was just like, no, they just don't want to serve yeah. us. Yeah. You know, no, that, it, was that was very, it was very clear they did not want to serve us for whatever reason. Yeah. Our accent, our appearance or whatever. They're lost. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, they're lost. So we <laughs> we dragged them all why don't we do the, pe- the Why don't we do the pretty woman thing? Big mistake. Come back, <laughs> come back when we're all dressed up and nice and yeah, yeah. I know you work for commission, right? Big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Flash some pounds in their face. Yeah, that's right. Have all the pounds. Oh no, you can't have these. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Uh, well, we drug them all over our Facebook group and somebody had actually came back and said, you know, there's one in Oxford and they do the same thing to people. So I was like, OK, maybe this is like symptomatic of a bigger problem. Maybe they didn't have enough staff. Well, maybe they and I think we also ended up going on like the UK's version of Yelp or whatever and blasted them no, there. <laughs> they, we didn't have to because they had already been blasted because apparently the manager at that place really sucked, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the one in Cardiff yes. was very unsympathetic yeah. and very sh- just a shitty manager. Fuck those people. Yeah, exactly. Where'd we wind up eating? It was a Pizza Express. Express. That was better because they fed us. Yes. So thank you. Quickly. And it was tasty. <laughs> I think it it's tasty. Good. I like their pizza there. It's um, off the beaten path, but we all got our own pizza too. Yes. Yeah, we did. It was good. And then we went home and crashed. Well, no, we stayed up. We s- Then we, we didn't want to go to bed. No. Yeah, we didn't want to go to bed because we were up. We were energetic. I was like, okay, we're going to make it to 10 o'clock clock. And he was just like, I think I could do it. I said, you're doing it. We're we doing did it. Yeah. And, then we, and then we went to uh, Penny Royal, which I think was like the coolest, most a- atmospheric bar we went into, to be honest. Oh, yeah. That first night, that was good. It was dark. And- oh, is that where we had the absinthe yes. and, uh, gin yeah. drink? Yes. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. We drank a lot of gin that night. Yeah. And he <laughs> yeah, let us steal the, or let me steal the coaster and stuff. He was a very nice young man. Yep. That was a great place. Their menu was so cool and clever and it looked like a graphic novel and I can't say enough but nice things about that place. And at this, t- mm-hmm. at this time, at Wednesday night, it was fairly it was, empty. Yeah. It was nice and quiet and moody mm-hmm. and we could actually have a conversation and it was wonderful. Yep. And then and we made it back to our flat mm-hmm. and sat around talking. Next thing we know, it's like the next morning. 10 30, 11 o'clock. Yay, we're going to go to bed. And we woke up and it was the next morning. Mm-hmm. Yay, we beat it. Yay. We beat the first day. And then we went to Madame Fromage for breakfast. Oh, oh my God. Ooh, thank you that again for so the recommendation, good. Deb. That was so delicious. So, so, so oh delicious. Oh, my God. So good. Oh, and those, oh. those Welsh cakes. Oh, I loved it. Very good. Very, yeah. every, very everything good. was very, very good. And then we, we saw a lovely Patricia. Yes, we did. Yes, yes. we did. Patricia took our, our picture. She's like, hi, you guys. Can I take your picture? I was like, of course you can take our picture. <laughs> and picture came outside visited, of the window. Came and visited us for a few minutes. And Yes. Yeah. We ordered anything that said Welsh. So Welsh cakes and Welsh rarebit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I had a popcorn latte, which was delicious. Oh, it was. Delicious. It was yeah, really good. It was really good. Yeah. And then we got our uh, uh, pack mule bag there. Yes. Yes, we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and wandered through the market. I, my new deck of tarot cards found me from the little game store that was in there. Mm-hmm. Did, did we find the tattoo lady, that tattoo artist that day or was that a different yes. day? Yes. Right across. Right across. Yes. From your, yeah, right across. That was the same day. They were very lovely. Unfortunately, you couldn't get your piercing done there since 
since they didn't do piercings. No, they didn't do piercings. And I didn't, wasn't even planning on getting a piercing. But you did. But I did because uh, before that, I think I had explained to you in the episode prior, I was in Chicago and uh, Devin wanted a piercing. And she's like, I want to get my ear pierced. And I was like, you know, every 10 years I do get a piercing. So I got my tragus pierced in one ear. And I decided I like that piercing. I was like, huh, I wonder if I should get my other one done while <laughs> I'm here. So I did eventually wind up getting it. It was way cheaper and she was way better. Yeah. You had less pain afterwards. I had less well. pain. Yeah. She was wonderful. That was actually a nice little shop. And we did that like right before it, we ran back and changed. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so what did we do? We did Madame Fromage. We went to Cardiff Castle that day, yes. right? Did. Oh, that was so yep. much fun. Well, yeah. I, <laughs> that, it wasn't, it wasn't, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie was tasked with taking pictures of us while Jean and I were in the towers and <laughs> Valerie, yeah. Yeah. Valerie, <laughs> we climbed over here, Valerie. Now we're over here. Now we're up here. We climbed up into the like, key. Okay. And we ran into Lily. We ran into yeah. you guys took Samantha that tour Martinez. Too. Well, yeah, we went through the up through the keep and then through the walls, which was an adventure right. in itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Do you want to take? The, you can tell that part of the story, Angela. <laughs> uh, she's good at that part of the going story. going through the like, keep. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, they have this reenactment almost. It's this blaring like World War Two ish like warnings, and it's almost like you're in a bomb shelter because that's what they did use it for yeah. during the wars as a as a shelter um, from air raids and everything. But it's it's very like Jean. You had a good description. It's like time folding in on itself because not only was it um, was it William the Conqueror that built that originally? It was built to repel William the Conqueror, actually. Yes. Okay. So it was like around, what, 1,000, 1,051 or something. Yeah. Um, and so it was used as that at first, but then later on, they used it as a uh, shelter from air raids and everything. So it was... Was it also involved in the English Civil War somehow? They also talked about how that particular castle was like right in the midst of repelling outside invaders and, and the yes. Vikings and so what, whatnot. So it was always a very highly active military sort of install, like a bulwark against the barbarian kind of yes. thing. So a lot so. of layers of history and time. And I mean, we were, so you walk down this long stone corridor and you hear the this, you know, take cover now and these simulated bombs going off. And it's very disconcerting. Not only, I mean, you just feel the energy. There's lots of energy and different energy from different times. And maybe that's something we can post on Patreon because I took a video mm -hmm. walking down the, the corridor, oh, but be, it's, it's oh, yeah. very unnerving and the lights are kind of flashing as if a bomb is hitting and it's mm -hmm. just a lot to take in, a lot for your soul to take in. As we came around that one corner, there was like almost, it was almost like a walking kind of roundabout. And then we went yes. down that, that hallway where the canteen ended up being in the beds and whatnot. Yes. It almost, to me, it felt like the sound show and whatnot that the curators had set up was meant to be a distraction more than anything else because yeah. it, it got yeah. very like Angela said very soul deep unnerving yeah and at, at mm. one point I did feel Gina and I were walking down and I turned around there's no one behind us but you could just feel that closeness of something or someone yeah. and it was I, it was more like the person I felt like they were confused or like they wanted to tap us on the shoulder like what's going on what's happening not uh, not bad not good not anything yeah. just like someone there that never left that, like right. there was, for me it was kind of like there was a question hanging in the air the sense that somebody w wanted to ask us something, but yeah. didn't or hmm. couldn't or couldn't they were remember confused. what it was. A lot of confusion. Yeah. And that's exactly what it felt like. I mean, you definitely took that on. It's like a lot of confusion. Yeah. And so that like was a keep. Said, <laughs> yeah, that was a yeah. keep. <laughs> and, wow. and Valerie spent her time sitting under the tree that just beckoned to me as soon as we looked through the gates while we were figuring out who we had to pay to get in. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like yeah. it was a tree. It was a good tree. It was a good. It was tree. an excellent tree. Provided shade. She <laughs> yeah. almost had a, her own grand entrance because she wanted to take a shortcut to you because we walked around the grounds and she's like, uh -oh. "Maybe I can walk down this this hill." And then, she just like one step and she's like, like, "No, oh, no, <laughs> it's a disaster." There's, yeah. no short, there's no shortcut there. <laughs> no, no. I was watching this little two year old try it and it was not good. <laughs> two year olds can recover yeah, though. I was gonna say they're per they're pretty resilient. Me, not so much. Yeah. Oh, my God. Didn't want to have to try been... out the National Health no. Service on my one week of vacation. Uh, no. <laughs> but after that, we we toured the mansion. Yes. And that was so, so cool. You could describe that, Jean. Okay. So so the first, uh, we, we actually took the paid tour. 
the first room we went into was the men's smoking room. Like I said, this place was plastered with all souls everywhere, it seemed. The main theme of that was the seasons and the zodiac. There was a lot of depictions of the gods. The fireplace was incredibly over the top, Mm -hmm. to, to say the least. But I think what really got me was just how ornate it was. And that was just the room. It was supposedly meant to be a place for the men to retire to and keep the women away. And the best part was <laughs> up in the vest in the vestibule because there were two sets of doors into this particular room. Mm-hmm. They had painted kind of a green man version of a devil up in the ceiling that was supposed to scare all us poor women folk away. Right. Oh. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> Who knew we'd evolved to laugh at that shit? I know. <laughs> well, I think we were laughing at it all along because his wife was very formidable in and of her own right. Oh, yes. yeah. And the funniest thing was is for all their talk about, oh, being a noble family and this and that and the other thing. They were no different than the American robber barons. They made all their money off of what? Coal? I think Coal, so, yeah. Wow. Coal and shipping. Wow. Because when, when both were nationalized after World War II, the family took it in the shorts and gave the castle and everything else to the city. <laughs> Long story short, the next room was the children's nursery, and that was all painted in fairy tales. And some of the versions were a little bit on the dark side, to say the least. Well, you know what? Those fairy tales that oh, Disney, yeah. Disney fight all up right. are oh, yeah. horrible. <laughs> none, of these, <laughs> none of these were Disney-fied. All we the fairy have, tales um, have bad endings. Yeah. yeah. It's a lesson. None of them are good. Lesson, don't yeah. do this, kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, my, my favorite was, is it's supposed to be a nursery for toddlers and their rendition of Jack and the Beanstalk has heads on pikes. Yeah. Hey, well, that'll teach you a fucking (laughs) lesson, won't it? (laughs) I mean, it it was really ornate. I mean, even the fixtures and everything else were designed to to fit in with it. I think my personal favorite was Sleeping Beauty. What was yours, Angela? Trying to think. I don't know. I liked Hansel and Gretel, although it was what called Kids in the Woods. Yeah. (laughs) Something. (laughs) That was still a gruesome story, even though what, what it was cleaned up. Yeah. It's yeah. still kind of gruesome. That was pretty gruesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was a really neat one. And then they had, the light fixture was Hey Diddle Diddle, because you had the cow jumping over the moon and the cat and everything else. Wow. Um, but all the way around the room, it was a mural of different depictions yeah. of fairy tales, like the main character. So you kind of, I think it's said underneath who it was, but you if you looked and not noticed what title it was, you'd be able to, mm-hmm. to determine what fairy tale it was. They were very, like, almost a pre-Raphaelite version of medieval. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As far as the style of the, all the murals in there, then was it the dining room, the big dining room where yes. President Obama and everybody, yes. there had been a number of leaders, including the Dalai Lama and President Obama and the Pope. That dining room was uh, very had, Gilded Age. Very, wow. very Gilded Age. Very big. There was a Juliet balcony on one end. The windows were pretty amazing, too. And then was the family dining room next to it? Yes, it was. It was. Yeah. The family dining room was what was really over the top because they had this crazy table where the gardeners would bring in a wine, uh, grapevines that would in a pot that would fit under the table and look like it was sprouting out of the middle of the table like a tree and you could eat your grapes off the vine. It was like very, very mm-hmm. decadent and over the top. Was that the room, though, that they had that beautiful jade colored fireplace? Yes. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That was a beautiful gorgeous. tile. That was a beautiful tile. And then um, from there, we climbed many, many stairs again. Up the stairs, up the stairs. Do you see why I sat under the tree audience? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then we went up to the ladies' study, which was really subversive and probably my favorite room in the whole house because it was octagonal, more or less. It was in the tower. And she had, it, they also called it the Chaucer Room, which I think was just a stupid cover because it was all depictions of women in the corbels. And it was like medieval. Uh, and Dido and... Uh, like women heroes yeah. almost. Yeah. yeah, basically women heroes and women martyrs all the way around Cleopatra around the room. And then what was even more interesting were all of the fertility symbolism that was embedded in the actual fireplace and the tile floor was a tile depiction of a labyrinth which also ties back into all pagan fertility. There was a lot of pagan undertones in this room. Pagan fertility worship and just even most of the women that were depicted were pre-Christian mm-hmm. heroines as well. So 
for them to call it the Chaucer Room was kind of a joke to me. Yeah. But that's just and me. he was he was the only statue in there. So we're like, really? Why is this the yeah. only guy amongst <laughs> all these women yeah, heroes almost, and martyrs? It almost felt like the missus was put him up as a cover so yeah. silly men wouldn't ask too many questions. <laughs> they mentioned that she was a very strong inf- influence and she made all the uh, design choices in that room, which was another reason I thought it was probably a, a sham. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and a cover. So, and then from there, more stairs, up, 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 up. And there's this fabulous, what would you call it? An atrium or a roof garden, Angela? A roof garden, yeah. Yeah, it was It was almost like Pompeii, which we'll also get to later on in our mm-hmm. adventures, but it was a very Romanesque. With a glass roof. Yeah. yeah. And fountains. It, it looked like an old school atrium and decorated panels all the way around in kind of a red umber color with these almost incongruous uh, archer slits. Yes. Because it was also at the old part of the castle. So it was also a defensive position, which the uh, 19th century Marquess turned into his like little pleasure garden complete with fountains <laughs> and plants and everything else. Nice. Oh, and his bedroom room as a young man before he was married. That was strange. Yeah. Huh. The bed was very small. It's but thin and short, was, yeah. Yeah. And the bathroom was very lavish. <laughs> The embellishments and decor was all very biblical. Yes. The thing that stood out to me was that huge wardrobe in the corner with the silver mirrors, which supposedly part of it was to give the room the illusion of being bigger than it was mm-hmm. and, and whatnot. Yeah. But Amazing. yeah. But the funny thing was in the main house, it was all very relaxed. You, we didn't get the same sort of feeling Form. of time no. time folding in Not at, at all. all that we got. It was like, it, it felt like touring a house. Yeah, it did. Frankly. Oh. It was, the keep the in the spot. walls were a whole different story entirely. Well, and I feel like yeah. that energy will never be let go with what they have going on, trying to recreate no. um, yeah, the, the I, feeling. Yeah, it's almost like, it almost feels like a tether sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Valerie enjoyed her time under the tree. Yeah, it was sure. great. It was like a proud mom watching the kids poke their heads out. Look at us. We're here now. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Take a picture. I was like, oh, okay, kids. I got it. Here you go. <laughs> wave. Everybody wave. Everybody wave. All right. Well, we had a good time, though. That was a good yeah. time. Mm-hmm. And then we left the castle, and who would we run into? Shelly and Melanie Sh- and Ginger and, and, and Ginger Lauren. And Lauren. And Lauren. Yep. Just right down right the street. Up. Like, I- Hey. It was like yeah. it was like uh, the scene out of Seinfeld when the Bizarro <laughs> Jerry and yeah. Jerry and oh, company. God, yeah. Even though we're not Bizarro with them, it's just it was like a meeting of that. Like all of a sudden, yeah, you know, us three against us them four. It's like yeah. wow, we've been here before, but not really here. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. So it's we hung weird out. Running, it, running it to our fellow con goers like that that have gone consistently for at least the past three years, mm-hmm. right? So a couple of years. When you, yeah, when you run into them, it's just like you never left them, right? You know, it's like, hey, look at uh, all of us in this strange place. Hi. Yeah. You know, it's no big deal. Right. I know. And people are kind of looking at us like, God, you guys, didn't you just see each other five minutes ago? Kind of, because of the familiarity we were exhibiting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, when well, you talk to people term. all year long online and such, you know, and yeah. then you see them in person, it's like no big deal. Oh, it's like, hey, it's you. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, hey, it's me. It's no yeah. big deal. It's and like when we see each other. And we're kind hey, of it's a you. huggy group, too. So that, yeah. that probably created a spectacle for some of these UK type people. So yeah, it's well. Fairly demonstrative. I am going to ask right here before we get too deep into our uh, con going. What were your impressions initial of the UK at this point in time? Cardiff. I really liked Cardiff a lot. Yeah, I did too. Um, overall of the UK, it's like a hybrid. Like you said, it's not Europe and it's not United States. It's mm-hmm. somewhere in the middle. Uh, yeah. So that was kind of <laughs> strange, but I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. I, I, they were, uh, at least in Cardiff, the people were, the exception of Zizzies, were far friendlier than I expected them yeah, to be. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I don't know if I, I didn't, I didn't have an ex- expectation of them not being friendly, although we are the Americans. So that's always that yeah. possibility, but I was thinking they'd be more reticent than many of them yeah, were. Yeah. Yeah. And you always think, of the English humor and stiff upper lip and very uh, yeah. shielded emotions. And not that anyone is overly mm-hmm. emotional, but it, they were just more, they were warm. They were warm. Yeah, yes. Very warm. Yeah. Nice yes. people. I, I find that like once you get out of the town centers and stuff like that, then people kind of close in a little bit. Yeah. That's what I noticed. Mm-hmm. Like, Because yeah. I noticed uh, in the UK, sure, there's suburban areas, but not like we have suburbs. Yeah. We have miles and miles and miles of suburbs before you get to rural. There you have like a 
few suburban areas and then it's rural. Yeah. And it's just how it is. It's like you go town, farmland. <laughs> yeah. So that's, I think that's the big difference between us and uh, the UK. It's like we will have a city center then we have sprawling miles of suburbs surrounding the city center. And then you have like the exurbs, like a little splattering of houses. Mm-hmm. And then you go rural. There's yeah. like five different layers before you go rural. So that's what I noticed. But I think with a landmass, they, they kind of have to do it that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other thing I, the other thing that I noticed that I can finally describe now is like Wales had an energy to it. There was yes. just this weird that I did not feel quite the same kind of energy in Oxford that, but there was something really crackling in the air. Well, it's also more homogenous. I mean, when you go to Oxford, that's going to be anywhere. I mean, people from anywhere yeah. could be there. It definitely is. Well, so. the, the week we were there, it seemed like every tiger mom and her, her child from Japan and every other place in the world was there that week for... It felt like orientation week over yeah. 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 Only they were all like between the ages of 10 and 14. <laughs> it's like, you will be going here, damn yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> the class of 2025 or something. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> 2030, excuse me. All right. So the reception, go ahead. Okay. Who wants to tell this part of the story? Well, I apparently didn't remember it. <laughs> I know, I know. It was a lot packed in, though, in these few days. So we walked into the museum, right, yep. for the cocktail hour for yeah. registration and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that. Yeah. And that's kind of a big deal because we had kind of a surprise visitor. It was awesome. Show up. <laughs> it was crazy. Everything about that was kind of, I mean, it was crazy fun. I mean, we got to meet the people behind Discovery of Witches TV. The people we've been talking to over email all this time. Social media all this time. Social media all this time. Yeah. And then, of course, so many people that we are, we talked to over over the year and have known from past cons. Yes. And mm-hmm. Online. And everybody was in the room again. Yeah. And we picked up where we left off. They had cha- what do they had? Champagne and... Prosecco, I think, and white wine. Uh, Prosecco and red wine, maybe. Yep. And our doors were passed out. I don't out. know. I never, never got to, never got to the point where we had a drink, I don't think. I think I used somebody's drink ticket. I don't know know if it was Renee's because she handed me one. Yeah. I don't think I ever had a drink to be honest I didn't either. You. Yeah. I think I had a fake drink by accident. <laughs> yeah. I, I had, you know, I, they I had, had a sip of the, alcoholic was, ones. Oh, they had like a, I had a sip of Prosecco and it was so sweet. It was like, you yeah, know. But this little no. uh, soiree was in a gallery so you could actually view famous art. She, well, it was in the Impressionist Gallery which was kind of shocking to me. They had a stunning Renoir on the one wall and then all the way in the back one of Monet's Sunset in Venice, which was just stunning. And yeah. Oh, and people were eating cupcakes in there, which kind of made me cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking and eating cu- cupcakes in there, like it was kind of surreal. The whole thing kind of made me cringe because I thought it would be more climate controlled, that area. Oh, yeah. I was shocked that museum was not nearly as climate controlled. Comparatively speaking to the theater, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're right. (laughs) (laughs) But we digress. Yes. Yeah, we do digress. Okay. So uh, I personally want to thank everybody that had the guts after we asked. It's like, if you see us, come say hi. All the people came to say hi to us. And I'm oh, so yes. happy. I, I am know. so happy you guys did. So it's happy great. to see so many people and get to talk and visit and take pictures with people and just make new friends. And, and we say yes. have the guts to. It's, it's because we pre-show discussed this and said, we don't know that we would have the guts to go up to yeah. our favorite podcasters and say something. So you're an inspiration to us. Yes, I know. That's I w- true. I, I can tell for you for a fact that insert author for podcaster and I know I can't do it because I was faced with that after I came back uh, at a book event that I went to where I kind of like got tongue-tied and stepped back. (laughs) Matter of fact, you know, Devin was saying something about this. Her favorite podcast that I forgot, oh God, my brother, my brother and me, it's... It's a podcast out there. It's very popular. Well, they came to Seattle and she went to go see them. She loves them. And mm-hmm. I was like, did you get to meet them? She's like, oh, no, I couldn't do that. And then <laughs> see, but your first reaction would be like, why? They're just people. Why? I know. <laughs> How hypocritical oh, no, I, I am. Do that. <laughs> and then I'm thinking to myself, Devin, you're an actress. You're going to have to be able to, you know, invite people in and say hi and everything. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, but it's just weird. It's just weird. 
weird. I feel like I know them, but I don't mm-hmm. really. So it's like, thank you for doing that. And, it's a um, highlight. Mm-hmm. It puts faces to names. Mm-hmm. It helps us because mm-hmm. we're like, oh, you do hear us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's weird. I think and this is jumping way ahead, but uh, it's relevant. Uh, when we were on the bus to Oxford, uh, somebody I in think front it was of Becky. us. Ro- it may have yeah. been Becky Robinson. Becky. Yeah. She said something. She's like, it's so weird. I'm falling in and out of sleep and I'm checking to see if I have my earbuds in because I keep hearing your voices <laughs> and I have to realize I'm really sitting next to you. Sitting right in front of you. <laughs> and we're still telling the same so, stupid stories. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> ones, but still stupid. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's really no different from when we're actually talking to each other. The same shit comes yeah. out. It's, it's just the after show all over again. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yes, yes. And Angela did bring that up and say, yeah, it is kind of intimidating. Yeah. I'd be intimidated. And if I thought about my favorite podcast, one of my favorite podcasts, if I like, oh, Dave Jackson. Yes. If I saw him, I'd be like, oh, I cannot. I am not worthy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> But I mean, he comes across as the most down to earth person I've ever met. So I would have ever met. So that's definitely a highlight for me out of the reception is getting to to meet new people, fellow fans and listeners. Yes. 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 And bringing up stuff that's like, what did I say? Oh, (laughs) Oh, God. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It was really cool. So uh, in the middle of all this and us handing, handing out our uh, badge ribbons, we had badge ribbons that said Demon Kiss. Mm-hmm. So every time we saw somebody, we gave somebody a Demon Kiss. In the middle of that, uh, Jean runs up to me and we're standing right in the entranceway and she grabs my arm. She's like, we don't want to move. Stay here. I was like, what? What? She's like, trust me, stay here. I'm like, OK. And I just like, what's going on? Why? Why aren't we? mingling what's going on I'm like no Jean just said to stay here and we saw why Jean do you want to say why I will say why because approximately two minutes, minutes after two to five minutes later yeah. in walks Deb with Aisha. Aisha Hart yep plays Miriam yes who is gorgeous down to earth appreciative so radiant wonderful. she is just a great person and tall, and tall. <laughs> super tall <laughs> Super She's tall. really tall, yeah. What do you figure? About t- 5'10 at least. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes. Oh, definitely. She's definitely model tall. Yeah. And just delightful and friendly and fans. She, She's a fan. She's like that. She's a fan of her fans. Mm-hmm. And shocked. Yes. She couldn't believe the reception she got. It was like, she was taking a panoramic of us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was wild. So sweet. Uh, tell, she was telling us a little bit about how she got to read Parts of Time Convert on set. Yes. So she got more more in sight into Miriam and the vampire scientist got to meet the real vampire scientist, which was kind of a cool moment when she when and Shelly she- got to meet I- Aisha. Yeah. yeah. And Shelly and Miriam met. Which is- I have to take credit for the fact that I was the first one to scream. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> because no one knew what was happening. It just hit me. I was like, oh, my God. And Deb started laughing. She's like, see, I told you. <laughs> Oh, I mean, but she crazy. must have been like Deb, the very first con when she's like, Laura proposed that we have all souls con. Like, and she said, who would show up? So I'm sure that yeah. Aisha had that little bit of trepidation and doubt in her mind. Yeah, like, like, are they really going to know me? Are they really going to appreciate, you know, yeah. that I'm here? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. They're here. <laughs> yeah. She had uh, that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Look on her face, too. It was it was wonderful. Yeah. And just so nice and kind of made their way around the room. She had a night shoot, I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was actually on a break from working. Yeah. Yeah. So. And wow. I mean, just meeting her was such a treat and a privilege. Because she's, I just, five minutes I talked to her, she was just amazing. And so thrilled to be playing Miriam. Yes. yes. I mean, she, I think she really enjoys the role. That was nuts. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the urgency in Jean's voice is like, like, just stay here. Just stay here. <laughs> and, I'm like, I, I, and to tell you that story, I was standing there talking to Laura in the drink line and somebody came up and let Laura know they're here. And I'm like, I here. just looked at Laura and I said, should I be standing in line for a drink? And she says, probably not. And I mean, it's not like we had any real sort of advanced information. She's just like, you probably don't want to be waiting around for a drink. And Laura didn't have advanced information that much ahead of us. Yeah. All she knew was that a VIP was coming and we just went with it. I do have to preface. (laughs) We did, well, not only did the Magic 8-Ball tell us we were going to have special surprises in Cardiff, (laughs) but we ran into the publicity team for Discovery Witches. Shout out to Chris 
Chris and Liam, and they said, mm-hmm. we're, you're going to be very pleased over the next couple of days. We have lots of surprises for you. And they did not disappoint. God, no, not at all. And they are just two of the f- nicest people. Very, uh, Liam is very friendly. I'm sure he was overwhelmed by the fact that he gained his own fan club, which was a little bit strange. But. <laughs> Liam uh, is the guy that made it possible for us to give you guys a script yep. for a giveaway last year, a uh, water bottle that was given t- out to the cast and crew. Mm-hmm. That was all Liam talking to us uh, through email. So it's like he felt like an old friend when we finally got to meet him face to face because we've been back and forth, back and forth yes. over the publicity. So there's going to be more when season two comes closer. Yeah, and, but Sky, and Sky TV gives us a blessing and if we're able to do it again. But yeah, yeah it's, it's just a matter of. So it was really cool putting faces to names and meeting Chris and and yeah, that was really cool. Considering, you know, I call them my email buds. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the people that we say we're in their their contact list as what now? <laughs> what now? <laughs> what do these girls want? And we want? did tell them that. <laughs> yeah, they had quite a laugh. I don't think they were disagreeing no, they with us. <laughs> <laughs> it was an instant laugh, actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was really cool. It was a great reception. We got our goodie bags, right? Yes, we did. Yes. Which uh, registration. Which had some yeah. cool cool little things in there, including that nifty Times Convert coaster. And mm-hmm. um, I think Laura is giving away one right now. Yeah. She's having a mm-hmm. contest. We got the new yeah. version of season two water bottles. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And who knows? There might be more for the rest of you. <laughs> Yay. Okay. <laughs> That's enough. We're working I'll, on it. Well, I'll we've got to wait until the powers that be give the go give ahead. Us, give the go ahead, yes. And then, uh, yeah, we have more stuff for our giveaways and future endeavors. Oh, 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 let me not forget. We met Karen, a.k.a. Outside Karen. of the museum. Oh yes. Outside oh the museum. That was so oh wonderful. my God. And she was waiting for our other little demon friend, Belia. Oh, I am such fans of these two. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to promote them later. But uh, Belia and Karen shouts to you. All of you that love fan art and appreciate art, you will know Belia and Kareen because their art is phenomenal. And yes, and I'm going to push them till the day I die. How's that? There are people. There are people. They're your people because they do art for this fandom. Uh, Please support them. And I will give you the URLs. I believe uh, Karen is KarenStar.com or she also is illustrated. I'll have to look. She's also illustrated.com. She's also illustrated.com. And Belia is BeliaSim.com. And Karen is also KarenStar.com. Her all of her works are located there. And I'll have them in the show notes. Make sure you visit and support them. Okay. Yes. They did. uh, Kareen did the All Souls con badge this year and it was beautiful and, and they I think- also did a, a collaboration all souls commemorative print that's yes. just lovely their prints are beautiful Belia's watercolors are oh. beautiful I just uh I, I can't rave on enough about them I've got my and eye on the water witch <gasps> Devin was here yesterday and she's like the way she does hands yeah, yes. Kareen, the way she does hands is just so beautiful. delicate and beautiful. And I was like, yeah, I let her have one of the hand ones. I was like, you can have this one then. Ah, I was all sad. She's like, because she's getting ready to move into a new apartment. She wants to decorate it. She's oh. like, I want, I want this for it. I was like, yes, you can have that. <laughs> <laughs> so yes definitely go visit them and uh, you're going to hear more from me pushing them because I'm yes. a big fan of art I love people who do Our creative digital art physical mm-hmm. art watercolor that I don't have the patience for because mine comes out like blobs <laughs> yes like one of those psychology <laughs> tests so difficult <laughs> yeah. yeah like a rose art test <laughs> okay so can we go on to uh, dinner that evening after all of that excitement <laughs> <laughs> it's like the non we picked up the nonsense right where we left off in Philly. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The loudest band you could ever think of that wasn't very good played in our ears for at least an hour and a half and that we night. We st- 
still managed to have a conversation with a posse of probably 15 people. Well, and at this point, I was thinking that not having wait staff was a one off at this joint. You had to go yeah. up to the bar, yeah. which was right in the center of the eye of the storm of the band and try to right. place yeah. your order. Up. Oh, my and, God. And they were out of half of the stuff on their menu. Yeah. <laughs> so who was at this dinner? Uh, Anna was at this dinner. Ivana was at this dinner. Ivana, Gail. Um, Gail Alana, was at this dinner. Shelly, Melanie, Alana, Belia, Elena, Karen, Shelly, Elena. Belia, Karen, Gail. Oh, uh, yeah. So the band's all back together. <laughs> yeah, the band the, and the band's getting. We just added a string section too. Yeah, Jesus Christ. We're gonna be. It's gonna be like the Page and Plant tour before long if we're not careful. Uh, it was vibrating my ear that I just got pierced, and I was like, "Ow! What are you people doing?" It was well, me. I can tell you what one person was doing. Shelly was busy like cougaring up the baby uh, gal baby glass gal waitstaff. Glass waitstaff. <laughs> He was very nice. He was like the nice bartender up there, to be honest, yeah. too. But did he we was ever very. Get a, did yes. we get a picture yeah. of him? Shelly's got a picture with him, and I think she's on his lap. God help us all. Oh, jeez. <laughs> she's so tiny, though. She could hold herself <laughs> up. <laughs> so that, yeah, that I was think an he's interesting. He's on her lap. I, I, almost I, obligatory. I, I airdropped her the picture. I think she. I think he's almost on her lap. <laughs> oh, okay, I knew there, were lap, there yeah. was a lap involved. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, so, uh, day one. Do we want to go into day one of All Souls God? Oh. Uh, day one. That was interesting. Oh, so, God. what panel began our journey? That was the book panel. That was Caitlin, uh, Caitlin and Claire and Vicki Allen. And they talked all about the, the release of Times Convert in the UK. Yay! Which was kind of, it was a very good life cycle. Kind of a how to. Yeah. The life cycle of how, how a book is marketed and for people who don't know much about the industry it was really really interesting mm-hmm. they had a Q&A at the end there were some interesting things that were discussed there I can't remember a lot of it but yeah it was kind of it was overwhelming we were back it was a different setup this time it was a true theater setup with a, a pitched audience section mm-hmm. so everybody assigned had seating. A, a pretty good view and assigned, assigned seating which was I really liked steep globe theater setup I like that yeah. too I yeah. thought yeah. it gave everybody a better view you didn't have to worry about seeing over people's heads. And I hate um, bitching about this year after year, but come on, guys, with the heat and the air conditioning, you yeah. guys could do better. Do better. Anyway. It's hard for them to do better, though, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think so. But, I mean, it was unusually warm yes. that right. week. So yes. I'll take it, though. There was no rain. We had zero rain. No well, rain. Well, we had rain, no rain, rain once, but that was fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, after it was all good. <laughs> So, yeah, there was that. Um, the next panel was... Oh, it was a production panel. We had so to good. dip out. We were setting up our vendor table. That's right. Yeah, so I held down the fort. Defi- you guys definitely need to catch up on that. Uh, James North was every bit as cool as we thought he'd be. And Gaz, the location manager, was just hilarious. God, Gaz, come talk to us on the show. <laughs> Please. Come on the podcast. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he's got the same sort of sense of humor that Greg McHugh does. Mm. So. I think he'd be an excellent fit. Lachlan was Lachlan. Which is lovely. Steering the ship off the rocks and just <laughs> caught with, with a twinkle in his eye and a little yeah. larceny in his heart. <laughs> and Sarah, the costume designer, had, oh, she brought us samples and had so much to talk about with this season. And I think we're all going to really love the costumes above and beyond the couple of sneak peeks we've gotten so far. But uh-huh. the real treat was, is we got some spoilers from James for the Elizabethan sets. Listeners, unless you were there live, unfortunately, if you see any images, they are not supposed to be out because Bad Wolf and Sky has asked that they all be clawed back. But I, I w- we will tell you this, that uh, the story that James told was basically Dove was so overwhelmed she broke down and cried. They had to get her a chair. Aww. She was so thrilled with the, she said it was like they went right into her head and saw her, her Elizabeth in London. So just think of what so, they did with the Bodleian and she had a misty moment with that one. And now this one, it's yeah. got to be really spectacular. This one, it's got to be it's, really, really good. And yes. from the few renderings we got to see, it's going to be. Oh my gosh. Oh, I get the chills thinking about it. But they're just great presenters, great interviewers. They're passionate about what they do. And it was so infectious just listening to all of them talk about what, what we're going to be seeing this 
this season. I can't wait to catch up with that and mm-hmm. watch the uh, recording of that. So. Oh, yeah. We also got to see all the featurettes. Yes, we did. That's how we started the day. Yeah, that's how yeah. we started the day. They eased us in. Uh, yeah. Some of them we had seen last year at the con and we American viewers were treated to them as part of the AMC rollout. Mm-hmm. So it gave everybody a chance to see them, and, which was wonderful. And it's always nice to watch them again because there's always stuff you forget yes. about. And it's fun. Very much fun. And then we had, then it was lunch break, I think. And the oubliette. <laughs> The oubliette. Yeah, the oubliette. Oh my god! Oh uh, yeah. So the vendor tables were stuck in the oubliette of the of the museum, <laughs> and some kind of maze down these stairs, through these doors, around here, around there, and then you find the vendor table. So yeah, next to the cafeteria. Yeah. Oh my gosh! We made co- there were a lot of close friendships made yes. in that oubliette. That's for yes. sure. <laughs> friendships yes, were forged I, out of uh, necessity and <laughs> just because there was not a lot of room in there yeah. and from what I heard from people there was a line trying to come in and people would li- you didn't have time to linger over the tables and see what was there no real shopping was going on it was yeah. unlike Philadelphia for those of you who were there Bru- you know there was room to browse. hang out at the table browse we couldn't even bring out our microphone to do creature thoughts this time so uh, we're hoping wherever it is next year we'll get to do it so we had a lot of plans but we didn't consider the venue because we hadn't seen the venue right. so yeah hey well the same, so, same th- sort of thing happened with demon hour with yeah. the scheduling of the man united yeah. ac milan game that kind of yeah threw everything into an uproar our vendor yeah. partners though was janet from trilogy and oh, yes. belia and belia. kareen from all souls illustrated and the 10th knot and waterstones 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 yes yes so it was really cool having the vendor table there and well, uh, can we just say valerie sh- special shout out to Janet, even though she probably won't hear this, she gave us so much last minute pointers on how to set up our table and what to do and how to accept money and how to convert it. Um, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> how to just make everything appealing and a good customer experience. Yeah. And she was just the best. It's, we ran into problems like very last minute because we were assuming... Well, I was. I, I'm going to take the blame. I was assuming that Square worked overseas because I looked online and Square does work overseas. If you have an overseas bank account, we do not. Which Our they bank neglected account- to mention online. <laughs> Our bank account is squarely in the U.S. located in Texas. You know, there's nothing more U.S. than that. Bam, Texas. And I wasn't going to start a new bank account in the U.K. just so we could take money over Square. So we did a lot of uh, tender via cash and PayPal. Yeah, thanks yes. to everyone who bore with us. God bless <laughs> PayPal. God bless PayPal. Yeah. So uh, we did OK, considering yep, we did OK. Yeah. And people had cash they wanted to spend. So, hey, there you go. I mean, it's not like you could take those pounds with well, you when you go back money is to the different. States. You have like unlimited vacation money, <laughs> you know, when you're spending. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's like, tell me with the brills. Oh, yeah, that, that one and that one. Yeah, okay, we're good. Here's your change. Right. <laughs> yeah, we, we did well. And uh, uh, I think I had a little bit of time to buy a couple of Janet's pieces, which was cool. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I, I bought mm-hmm. uh, the Fire Drake and I bought the uh, Ouroboros. What'd you get, Gene? I got the Griffin. You got the Griffin. Yeah. His name is Jasper. You named him? <laughs> I named him Jasper, yes. Oh, I wore the Fire Drake the other day when I just needed to fucking power through this cold. <laughs> <laughs> and work and everything. I was like, okay, you're going to do it. And I don't, I just called, I'm just going to wear the fucking fire drink. And I wore him that day and he helped me power through. So that was good. So the oubliette. And then we went up and we had to wait for the next panel. But in the meantime, what panel was happening, Angela? The loot panel. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. We, okay, full disclosure, we weren't there for the loot panel, but at peeking in, I happened to peek in at a spot where the lady was sitting on the man's lap and they were playing the same loot. And uh, I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> And I think I set off an alarm. You did. Angela. You you yeah. leaned on some fire doors and they <laughs> yeah. broke open. <laughs> broke open and I acted stupid when the security guard came over and said, who's that? And we up? still got yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to look really innocent. It didn't work apparently. 
<laughs> so there was that. And then the next panel was Oh my god. The T V panel. So I cannot speak. Uh you weren't allowed to speak because we were afraid of you losing your voice. I was yeah, I was allowed to scream once and that was it. Shelly handed me Mr. Pickles so I could squeeze it every time I wanted to scream. So yeah, that was uh Okay, we kind of rehearsed this, except for we didn't come from the Valerie angle. We did say, Gene, what could be your best case, worst case scenario? And (laughs) so we were kind of prepared on that front. But Valerie, you were the the wild card. Yeah, I I had no idea. I had no idea that Bluebell was going to be there. I don't think anybody, according to Laura, after the fact, nobody had any idea of who was going to be there. They just knew somebody was going to be there because it was so fluid until the last possible moment. So let's say who was there. First, we had our Diana Bishop, who is Teresa Palmer. Sitting next to her was Ed Bluebell, who, of course, is Marcus. Ed Bluebell, his hair, his jawline, all of that was there. (laughs) And Valerie was there for it. Yes. Uh, Next to him was the future Phoebe. Adele, what's her last name? Deliance. Deliance. She was there. Rather delightful young lady. Oh, I enjoyed her immensely. She, she, She was holding her own with that break. Oh, my God. God. Did I mention Ed Blumel yeah. was there? He was there. Oh, yeah, God. you did. You did. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, but you haven't mentioned that Tristan Gravel was there and all sweaty I'm and to hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to him. I uh, seated next to Adele was Tristan Gravel, who was introduced as who? Mr. Mad, Mad, Mad and Bad Dangerous. and Dangerous. And do you want to hear the funny story about that? Was a few weeks before that, I gave Deb his T-shirt for his uh, fiance, which was the Baldwin bus, and one extra one for him, that which was the mad, bad, and dangerous one. And she said, he's going to love this. I'm going to put it in his trailer. I think she did. <laughs> and I think he might have worn it a couple times <laughs> based on that introduction. Yeah. So, yes, here he comes out in a, I wouldn't call that a wife beater. It was basically a black version of a wife beater. Yes. uh, Some newly revealed tattoos that we weren't Uh, aware of. Oh, Cardiff City Football Club. He is beautiful as a silver fox. Oh, scruffy and tatted up. Hello. Uh, I even enjoy the gap in his teeth. Uh, Yeah. The whole package is lovely. Apparently, I was louder than I... (laughs) I wasn't under my breath, according to Melanie. It was like a row ahead and four people over who basically heard me. Which Listen, there was no fear of you losing your voice, so you were given full reign. (laughs) Yeah, but God, I hope no one besides Melody heard me because, God, I'm embarrassed. (laughs) Melody wasn't even sitting Uh, next to you, though, so obviously other people heard you. Melody was ahead and down. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, well. It's all, yeah. it's all okay. I'm really not a stalker. Yeah, it, Just, it was good. I was overwhelmed by beauty. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's Tristan and uh, Deb. No, and, and then Valerie. Valerie. Pettiford. <laughs> oh, Valerie Pettiford. Oh, I'm so sorry. She was there in all of her glory. She takes a lot of space. How did I forget her? When I say she takes a lot of space, she's very much into movement. You can tell she's a dancer. You can tell she's a thespian. It's how she expresses my daughter's herself. Very, it's very much how, how my daughter is. Just spatial. So Valerie, Valerie Pettiford was there. Very nice. Very pleasant. Very open. Very um, excited. Excited to be there. You know who was extremely and comfortable amongst the, the cast? Adele. Adele Leance was very comfortable, yeah. appreciative, uh, hanging right in the thick of things. Yeah. Yeah. She reminded me of... Uh, Aisha, a little bit. Maybe and, it's their peers. I don't know. And but. what killed me about her was she's like, oh, this is cool because I already watched yeah. the show. I already watched season one. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I yeah. got it. So it was really funny. So Deb was pretty much interviewing mm-hmm. them. Um, they were given questions ahead of time from the audience and Deb was given the ones that were sifted through and... Mm-hmm interviewed them and it was great and um, I'm not sure if the passes are still on sale. I think today's the last day. Are they? I think so. Yeah, today's the last day. Sorry. Okay, so by the time you hear this. Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, the passes won't be available. But I mean, eventually you'll get to see it. Uh, I know they usually release it before mm-hmm. the next All Souls Con. So you might have to wait a year, but you'll see. So yeah, great questions. And that panel ended. I mean, it was crazy. Oh, so after that, it was us on. No, 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 and no. Jean what are you got, doing? What am I doing? What I huge announcement was made at, by Teresa Palmer. Oh, right. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. So this is kind of a big deal. It was Teresa kind of a huge Palmer deal. Uh, announced a new cast member. It wasn't Gal Glass. It wasn't Gal Glass, no. It was Kit. Yes. And oh, just looking at his picture. Oh. That is Kit. No yes. doubt about it. I, I uh-huh. love the whole re- revelation, though, because it was a leading with the question of how do you feel about competing for Matthew's love this season? And she said, well, first of all, I want to know who this person is. And then she kind of let in and said, do you want to know who is going to play Kit? And of course, we like We're lost like, our minds. Uh, yeah, big picture of him. <laughs> yeah. After. Oh man, Tom Hughes and a really beautiful picture of him yes. as well. I've never seen anything he's in, but I will research and do my due Victoria. diligence. Yeah, no, I haven't seen that either. Yeah. Nope. So I will watch him and see what I think. Yeah, and and I guess and what was so funny was is as they're revealing, uh, Deb is at her podium and she looks at Angela and I like, are you guys okay with this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> my husband bobbing up and down. Yeah, we're okay with this. Well, yeah. I understand it now. I mean, of course, I internally felt overjoyed, but I didn't realize that my external appearance showed how overjoyed I was. <laughs> we have we pictures like, of you <laughs> in reaction yes. mode, which was crazy. <laughs> the whole thing was crazy. You know, it was just like so. We were so in the moment too. Yeah, I don't know. I saw be. his picture. I was like, so it's you, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Do not think to go rifling through my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, I know he's going to do a great job. I know. Just ba- and we're going to get like the it. messy love triangle take on it too from the sounds of it which is just yeah. oh I'm so excited hopefully they do enough episodes so we're allowed to see some of that yes. so that that would be great yeah okay so can now I could go into how it was our turn and G got on stage and grabbed Ed Bluebell's I didn't water oh, bottle and threw it at, you. Threw it at me <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got to spend some time with that for a minute and uh, G I think she wound up <laughs> with Tristan's yeah and it's Name, I, I grabbed his, and his name, name tag. tag. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that happened. Yeah. I'm proud, but not proud. But I don't know. Who's going to arrest you, Laura? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll talk about the bus soon enough. Let's yeah, move sure on. Enough. All right. So um, we're not going to go too deep into our panel. That was our TV panel. I'll play you a little piece here. And like the picture show, we gave our whole TV panel with the King Demon looking down oh, at yeah. us. Oh, yeah. So let's play a little portion of that. I just think... She up there who put it, we're always going to have the books. And I think it's two different ways to enjoy some of the most magical things that we hold dear to our heart. Um, The TV show is not, the TV show is not going to be a literal translation of the books. And I think if we keep an open mind, we're going to enjoy season two um, that much more. And and now we know what we're in for. We know it's not going to be an exact literal translation. So I think it's kind of softened the blow to enjoy season two uh, even more. I have the right and... I just wanted to say something to you. When, when um, I went to the Sonic Waterstones, I mean, took us to the audience to watch the last episode of season one with a whole crowd of people. I don't think anybody else was there. Mm-hmm. But what was so amazing about it was watching it with other people. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. things that were really funny, I hadn't seen the funny until these people were all laughing around me. You know, she had and if you want the whole thing, you can become a patron and all of our, the whole panel will be located on our Patreon page. So there's mm-hmm. that. Okay. And I think we closed yeah. it, right? That was, that yeah. was, and that scene. was day yes. one. <laughs> and scene. And, and that scene. was day one. So what did we do after that? Where did we go to eat? Where did we, we go to eat? Went back and changed and dumped uh, out all our stuff. Where did we go? Gosh. That was Friday, right? Yeah, yeah that was Friday. Oh, we I went out for Spanish food. Spanish right. food. Tapas. With uh, the crew, the demon crew. Uh, with that a was good. Bunch of discussers and paella. There was lots of paella involved. There was too yeah. much paella involved. It was, I mean, it was good. It was tasty and it hit the spot because God knows we were all hungry by that point in time because catering from the museum was a little bit. I, I would describe our, our trip as we 
drank for enjoyment was, and we ate just to survive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was not this was not Nola or well, yeah, it was probably closer to Philly than to Nola. It's why we had a lot of snacks yeah. in the room. Between yeah. trail mix and granola bars <laughs> and chips. And, and voodoo voodoo potato crisps. Yes. Uh, yes. Potato uh, sticks. We had we had to sustain ourselves. So we were able to do that. Yeah, so, so yeah, we did that. that, that. Yep. Yeah, we had some drinks and retired we went, and did it all over again. And worked on our we had to work on our hero panel. Yes, we did. We worked on our hero panel. And then we were up for bright and early on Saturday morning and back at it. Walking in. It's always so fun walking in it is. with everybody. Yeah, yeah. And I believe Stephanie was the first one, right? Yes. McGuckin. She did a panel on manuscripts. Yes. Yes. And that was interesting and fun to look at. And she brings a lot to the table. I yeah. think what she uh, she's, she's does. Very, she enjoys what she does. Visual. Yeah, yes. she does. You can Definitely. tell. Definitely. Definitely. And then that was what followed up by Shelly. Shelly? Yep. I always love Shelly's presentations because I, I learned something that I don't know. Well, I always have the I'm doing it moment. <laughs> yes. yes. I'm doing this science. I'm understanding it for a <laughs> yeah. second. I'm sciencing. <laughs> And then Shelly gets off the stage and is like, wait, I lost yeah. it. <laughs> it's kind, of, it kind of like my whole experience with calculus in college. I'm doing I, it. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> the training wheels come off. You're like, ah, I just wiped out. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. Skin another knee. Yeah. Maybe this is not for me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yes, if you ever need genetics and science and the stuff broken down in a way where it's earthy, it's understandable, it's totally yeah. Related to the story. Yes, we have to have Shelly on mm-hmm. again. Soon. Yes, definitely. So, yes, Dr. Shelly, we salute you. We love you. Same thing every year. It's great. Yeah. Always blown away. And she always says a couple things that I walk away and I'm like, wow, I never thought of that. But her panel was on blood uh, yeah. rage, correct? It was blood rage and we even got a family tree. It was, it was so interesting yeah. and fun. It was good. It was yeah. good. And then, uh, what was after that? Deb. Were we lunch? No, it was Deb. It was Deb's panel. Yes, yeah, so it was yeah. Deb's panel. And then we had lunch. So Deb's panel was good. Uh, a lot of call and response. She yeah. put it out there. What have we learned this All Souls Con? And she got answers she wasn't expecting. She was expecting us to learn, you know, academic things, but we were, yeah, but we lecture or not lecture. It was a big talk about life lessons. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Moments. And know. how things are changing in the fandom and things are changing for everybody. And we just... and how we are all souls. Yes. That's what I love yes. about her talk is that about friction, how friction is good. It, you know, being uncomfortable yes. brings change, and that's what we're in for. Growth. These next yeah. few seasons or years or years to come. And, and I just loved how she invoked Pam and Cecile. Yes. Yes. That was perfect. We had Deb, and then what was lunch, right? And then, yeah, and we had lunch. And then the oubliette again. In the oubliette. <laughs> we had lunch in the oubliette. And then, then. I snuck food in there. I had trail yeah. mix in there and stuff. Uh, <laughs> I sh- tell sh- nobody. I know. And I snuck and pop. Yeah. Then I th- I did the V. I was think I was the only one who did the VR because I wasn't the one. I was the only one who didn't get nause- nauseated yeah. by it. Yeah. <laughs> Which was so much fun, except for the fact I ended up on the wrong side of the bookcase up on the, <laughs> when I went to get notes and queries, I was behind the bookcase. Exactly. And then I walk, get to walk right through through it like a ghost and there is Matthew Good. <laughs> Did we do Weaver chords after that? Yeah. 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 I have to say, Wendy ran that Weaver chord like a thing, boss, like a boss that she is. Oh. And I even volunteered to next year help her out because she's going to run it again. I don't, I don't care. It was awesome. Uh, those certificates were the best. Yes, they were hilarious. Not that it was really hard to do, but I love crafting. It turns out, like, go yeah. figure. <laughs> and I just like you know putting th- making things, and, and it was a really nice, cool. It was a nice group. It was a nice size group. Um, um, mm-hmm. Everybody was having a good time. Wendy was having a good time teaching it. Yep. It was great. It yeah. was great. It was a lot of fun. Oh, the costume, the, the little surprise in the uh, costume t-shirt call out. <laughs> contest which was right before i think that was right before lunch too with lynn yeah oh right 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 that right. was hilarious when uh deb was like oh is this qvc now yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> and, and to explain for the folks that weren't there or haven't seen the video yet uh lynn serrano who's a devoted listener to all the podcasts the director of registration her costume consisted of a chamomile and clove t-shirt and she made herself a chiffon cardi out of our <laughs> mad bad and dangerous scarf 
Oh my and god! Whirled around to reveal it like it was Superman's cape. Yes. <laughs> oh my the god! Big reveal was so funny, and we had absolutely no idea she was planning this. So it was like quite a shock for all of us. Lynn, I have to say, for like well played. ten hours after that, sales for that T-shirt went off the hook. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you, Lynn, and thank all of you who purchased a T-shirt. It's uh-huh. great. I mean, we get a little portion to help us sustain our podcast and everything. So we appreciate you mad, bad, and dangerously. The the permagrin was the best part because I was just, it was just so funny. It was like, are you kidding me? (laughs) It was hilarious. And embarrassing and hilarious. Oh, I I just found it hilarious. I was like, seriously? (laughs) Are you kidding me? (laughs) And it's so funny because that's like a three-year-old design and it's timeless. So I know. Angela says that's her favorite design. It is. I, I just think that slogan is so us. Yeah. Well, we thank, claimed thank it you. from the beginning. Thank <laughs> you, Carolyn Lamb. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was one of the things that we, it was a must have for our website design, that Mad, yes. Bad, and Dangerous to Know. We had to have Mad, Bad, and Dangerous to Know because if you describe Angela, Jean, and Valerie, you have Mad, Bad, and Dangerous to Know, <laughs> yep. which is kind of true. <laughs> and and who, who is what is interchangeable given the day. <laughs> yeah. Depending on who's doing what, where. <laughs> And how? Who done it and now? <laughs> right, exactly. Okay, so after we records, it was us again, and we did our heroes panel, and we won't go too far into that because the whole panel is available on Patreon for our patrons. But we can play a little clip here for you guys, yeah. and I'll put that here. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thanks for the noise. I can't see you all, but I want to hear you all. We're going to go a little scholarly, all right? And then after we're done with our talk, then we'll have a conversation. And we realize, oops, and we realize that we're the only thing standing between you and cocktails, freedom, dinner, airplanes. So we'll make this interesting and hopefully have a lively discussion afterwards. So be here with us, right? Yeah. Bear with me while we talk about boys. Oh, boys. And we like these ones. So welcome. That's my official welcome, by the way. Welcome. Thanks for coming to our talk. We're grateful that you chose to be here. On both panels, we had such great audience yes, participation. And everybody was so thoughtful and with their responses and really helped create a great dialogue. And thank you to everybody that was there and participated. And I hope that everybody who's listening on our patron website can hear everything because as it is, everything's live. And sometimes it gets a little bit difficult to hear some of the audience contributions. And I have to say for the second panel. Big shouts to Ginger. <laughs> oh. Oh. We, oh. We needed a Wendy Williams because what we noticed over the panels was uh, the mic was just getting passed from audience member to audience member and whoever's got control of the mic has got control of the conversation. So when we were preparing for our hero panel, we decided, listen, we have to control the conversation. Otherwise, we'll be out in there the weeds. And, <laughs> in the weeds and it'll be, get out of control. So we decided to invoke the ghost of not go. She's still alive, very much so. Wendy Williams. And Wendy Williams has a strict policy. She's a talk show host and she does not let anybody touch her mic because if you lose control of the mic, you lose control of the conversation. That's Wendy 101. And Wendy, if you touch her mic, she will look at you shady. She will smack you with the mic. She'll be like, "Uh uh-uh, no. And Ginger did that perfectly. So thank you, Ginger. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) So, yeah. Thanks for being our Wendy Williams. And I think we'll keep you for that. Yay. Job security. Job security. And after that, we... Laura closed it out. Yeah. Yeah, Laura Laura closed closed it out. out. And that was the end of All Souls Con 2019. Another one in the books. And it was... And then we walked out and it was pouring. And the Manchester United fans were headed to the game. I was underwhelmed. You were underwhelmed? Really? In in only one way, because it was built up to be such a huge thing as, you know, football crowds and da-da-da-da-da. And Angela and I looked at each other and said, this isn't even in a big rival football, you know, rival Big Ten. It's a morning on Big Ten, except for without the bratwurst. Yeah. (laughs) Without the bratwurst. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, one thing I think that mitigated it is uh, Cardiff has nice wide roads. True. So uh, it 
didn't seem as overwhelming as it does maybe in a smaller town like Oxford or a place that's not built to accommodate that because a lot of the older towns in the UK, they're not built to accommodate like big stadiums like mm-hmm. that. They just mm-hmm. have these football fields and these little ass roads twining over and it gets mayhemish. So I guess in that regard, probably it was less overwhelming. They have a infrastructure to accommodate the fans. Even the rowdiness was under control. There was no one that was offensive and everyone was like, oh, we'll just wait till afterwards. I have to say it was like Cinderella's yeah. ball or the ball because yeah. the event came and went, the street keepers cleaned up and it was poof. Gone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, while they were while they were in the stadium, we found a place mm-hmm. to eat and we sat in that corner for like three hours until everybody cleared out of the streets. Yeah. And the, uh, Zero Degrees was a place we had dinner and yep. they were so nice and so accommodating because we had like the ever expanding demon dinner because people just kept <laughs> the hey, bishop house table at? and yeah it was the bishop house table for sure and folks yeah. just kept showing up and we just made room for one more what we have we had karen and uh, belia with us and then melanie messaged us and said where are nikki we and her and daughter nikki, nikki and, and her Caitlin. daughter the and intern Kate. joined us <laughs> yes nikki from all souls witchy women joined us uh, one of our favorite people we have to have her on the podcast soon too. Let's see who else. Oh yeah, the Melanie and Melanie Shelley and, Shelley and, all and Renee, them. Ginger and, and Lauren, and then Renee. Ginger and Law and Renee. We're like, where are you? Bring your ass over here, and all of us at this table they hanging just, out until well, we were the safe harbor because we already had our, yeah. our yeah. spot planted. Yeah, yeah, and luckily it was a big enough spot that we had room to just keep adding people, and they just kept bringing us drinks. <laughs> and the oh, the waiter, the wait staff was outstanding mm-hmm. there. I thought they were. Oh great. yeah, and they were accommodating, and they were kind and. Patient. Shouts. Yeah, yes. patient with us rowdy Americans. We weren't that rowdy to them that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, that was good. Had a great time. We we did have a great time. And I believe that was our last That was our day. last. And, and we, we people bust home. Yep. Yep. Which was great and fun and got to prolong the prolong the time so, together. And people bust means pretty much in like kindergarten terms. Everybody hold hands. We'll stop at everybody's house and <laughs> drop, drop <them>. people <laughs> off. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Because with rowdy crowds like that, you never know who you don't want people walking by themselves. Right. No. In a foreign land. And we did get harassed no. as people bust. I mean, but well, we're, yeah. we're, we're, oh, yeah. we're big we enough and been around the block enough times to be like, girl, please, just stop. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but it was kind of hilarious because even even Derek's friends were all like, don't listen to him. He's a tosser. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're all like, boy, bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever. So, yeah, that happened. And then the next day we got on the bus to go to Oxford. And Shelly was... jogged up to say goodbye to everybody. Yeah. 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 Which is funny. It was funny, funny, funny. And uh, Lynn, yeah. Lynn pulled something out of her magic bag. Silly woman that she is. And here I am confronted with another water bottle from Mr. Tristan Gravel. <laughs> ah. <laughs> It's hilarious. So, yeah, this uh, driver, our particular bus driver, kind of got lost. We drove around Oxford like four yeah. times before we got there. <laughs> so, Truth yeah. Truth be told, though, it's like Oxford was kind of confusing to get in and out of. It's like a roundabout after a roundabout yeah. after a roundabout. With a ring around, roundabout. with a ring around the roundabouts. Yeah, yeah. And so it was getting to the point at the end, uh, we were looking at our Google Maps and Angela's like, didn't we pass that already? I'm like, no. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, we did. She's like, like, wait, doesn't this look familiar? This kind of looks familiar. Uh, so I'm looking at my freaking map. I'm like, OK, make sure when we go around this roundabout where we get off at the A4142. Is that where yes, we're going? Finally. She had, and then she's like, yes, A4142. I'm like, OK, we're going to make it. Finally. finally. <laughs> Oh, God. So, yeah, we wound up in Oxford. And uh, yeah, so don't plan on getting an Uber in Oxford. No, there aren't. There are none. This is is a PSA. It wasn't good. I'm sure there's maybe that one or two drivers, but they weren't available. There's lots of cabs, but they were all full. Yeah. Apparently, you don't drive your own car around in Oxford very much. No. We asked a couple school kids. "Uh, So, uh, transportation? They looked at us like, oh, the bus. Right. So yeah, that yeah. that was fun. Long, um, long story short, we got to where we needed to be. We got to our uh, Airbnb over there by Cardiff and, Castle. Yep, no, not Cardiff. Oxford I'm sorry, Castle. Oxford Castle, Castle yeah. Castle. And we decided to just walk. We went to a pub that we really feel like it was kind of the TGI Friday of pubs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> just to fill our face, you know, sustenance, like Angela said, survival. Yep. Just eat to eat, eat to survive and keep going. Then we walked around and we wandered, wandered, and we're like, oh, is that that college? Okay, we we'll take a picture, and then oh, is that that place? Oh, okay. Then we take a picture, and next thing you know, we're seeing like the dome of the Radcliffe camera. I'm like the thing. It's right here. <laughs> oh my god! And so then we started to get really serious. We wanted to see all souls. We want to see where the bodily and everything's pretty close. So, but, but we got all turned around over by Christ Church. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. Come to find out, so we wander wander by Christ Church and end up walking down the path to the river. Yeah, and got turned around and somehow found our way back on the main street. And then come to find out, the next day we were on the towpath where they film Teresa and uh, Malin scene where she was confronted she was jogging. jogging. Yeah, we must have looked. If you could, if you got an aerial view of us, we look like pin the tail on the donkey. Like we're <laughs> we got so oh, yeah. close to Folly Bridge and then it went back. We got so close we to st- All Souls and then we went back. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it was hilarious. So we got out the Siri map and, you know, we're looking <laughs> and it was kind of getting us lost a little. But then I'm like, no, it says it's right here. And then we walked around. What was it? Queensway? Yeah, yes. And, or, and then in a new yeah. college. Yeah. Walked around Queensway and we're like spiraling, hoping to get to somewhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. And there it is. The bridge of size. Boom. Just bam. Like right around your corner. Face. Boom. Like, there it is. I think Jean I stopped, was about to fall over. Yeah. I stopped dead in my tracks. <laughs> Probably so like, if you were st- right behind me, you would have probably knocked me over. <laughs> yeah. She saw the bridge's size. Like, because normally the picture's taken from the other side, but we came in from the back end. Yeah. And she's like, <gasps> I was like, gee, all the, then uh, finally I got around the corner. I was like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. why she's like that. <laughs> <laughs> Because that is my favorite scene that did not make the show. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm just like, I'm standing here. Yeah, but now I kind of understand why they wouldn't have him sit on yeah. top of that. Yeah. <laughs> even, though it's, even though it's only 100 years old, apparently. It's not like it's ancient, ancient. Yeah, they could have built a replica in and, a studio um, somewhere. Come um, on. They have an unlimited budget, right? <laughs> so we're taking pictures, taking pictures, and we, we keep inching forward to where we're on the other side. And then we decide to take this selfie. Angela's like doing a selfie thing. And the next thing we know is like... Boing! And yeah. there's Laura. Laura, Laura. photobombed us. <laughs> yeah. I, she didn't mean to. They no. just happened. No, they she were the did. Sit- she ran up behind us. She was trying to photobomb us and she not, she got so close. I think Angela wasn't able to actually take the picture and we turned around oh. and there they all were. Yeah. It was hilarious. They were like five minutes behind us on our journey. They went kind of around. It was Wendy, Laura, and who Linda, was Zip. It? Linda Zip. Yep. Yeah. And Jen Tapp and her husband. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. It was, it was delightful and fun and. Then we just all sort of we went over together. to Eaton. Was it Eaton College? No, not Eaton College. Yeah, um, they had the um, door where, where sh- Diana walks out and meets Matthew, and Jillian confronts her. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh god, the, the stand-in for New College. Yeah, and it was also the door where um, episode three when yeah, they, they walk out, the power yeah. couple walks out. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god, which one? Which college is that? I don't remember now. I don't know. They were closing the doors on us as we got there, so yes. it was kind of irrelevant. Went into the Bodley and Quad that night. Mm-hmm. Uh, Just before they closed. Saw the Radcliffe camera. I mean, up close and personal. Yeah. Wow. And that, Just like a picture. And we ran into Sherry and Dora and Alex and Tracy, maybe? Because there was another another yeah, con, Tracy. con force and we ran into mm-hmm. and had a chance to visit with and chit chat for a little bit. It was just fun wandering around town and just wandering into people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really, really cool. Felt like the party just kept going on. Right. Okay. We could go into where we ate and everything like that. It's just sustenance, guys. We had gin and sustenance. (laughs) Just just understand that. (laughs) Um, uh, So the next day you guys went off touring. Yes. We did the uh, Oxford Oxford Castle. Castle. Yep. Tell the story. Angela. (laughs) Oxford Castle in prison. We went, bought our tickets. We looked up our coat of arms in the gift shop. I looked up Fabian and Hutter. You looked up Siska and the variations of Siska. And then and it was time for our tour and we went in and only one gate of the, the castle, the, the original castle, uh, survived. So it's survived. the West Gate. And we're like, oh, a eureka moment. That's why it's called the West Gate Mall near us where you shopped at Joe Malone. Yeah. But we, we <laughs> yep. had this... Uh, Funny how that happens. Yeah. Lovely, young <laughs> American tour Very guide. Young. Yes. And uh, he, he was there to follow his girlfriend who's actually studying at Oxford. But he, we were like, where are you from? And he... 
he's like Minnesota. So it was kind of <laughs> <laughs> ironic that this it's guy also. was he was giving a, a tour of Oxford Castle. But we did that. We found a little bit of the history. We these stairs were no joke. They were a hundred plus, but oh it was definitely a cardio buster. And we got to the top, and our legs were shaking and hurting, and our hearts were pounding. The the one thing he was very accurate about is they were strategic stairs, so they were not staggered as far as rise run, and they were very narrow. Yes. Unlike Cardiff Castle, there was no hope of somebody coming back down. At no. the same time, people were going And even up. the, the stairs that Diana happen. describes in A Discovery of Witches, they're very far apart. They're large and you have to take large strides. These were actually the opposite. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Very close to climbing a ladder because I was using actual higher steps to just help keep balance yeah. going on. Wow. Yeah. But on top but of the uh, view of Oxford was yes. stunning. On top of the castle, <gasps> they had this, you could see all the spires, but then they had like a map showing which spires were which, and it was just beautiful. And it was all labeled. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which was great. Oh, and the mound. Yes. We climbed the top of the mound, which was very neat and cool. And the well was actually embedded in it. Go all the way up to the top, kind of like almost like a tour, pagan tour. And then there was a stairway down into the hill, mm -hmm. which was locked off. But apparently that's where the well was. It was kind of wild. Yeah. Very cool. But the castle wasn't nearly as spooky as the hotel. No, it wasn't. Hotel. And that was around the same time, too, because that was built by William the Conqueror, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So then a lot of it got destroyed. Mm. Yeah. Was it that in the English Civil War, I think? I think so. Yes, it was, because he said the, I don't remember what sides, Royalist versus Parliamentary. Yeah. I think the Parliament, they were holding Parliamentarians captive in their own filth. Yeah. That was the question we had, because they were talking about how they blew the whole thing up, and we were wondering, well, how could they blow it up if it, they hadn't gunpowder yet or dynamite? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Luckily, 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 Google wasn't working for us in there. Right. We were both looking at each other going, yeah, that doesn't sound quite right. No. That's what you guys were, when you came home, yeah, that's what you were complaining we're like, about. And then we Googled it right quick. You're we like, see, I told yeah. you. <laughs> well, he had said that they had been held prisoners in this space and they were left, they're like the filth got like three inches deep over their shoes, but yet the water source was underneath. We're like, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah. yeah. It was like the, the, the well house for the toll thing. Yeah. But then we went to the prison and that was the, started holding prisoners in the late 1700s. And we saw some of the old cells and heard some stories about that. I don't know. That was interesting too. Mm. I think though, the, mm. the hotel next door that was converted yeah. hotel from prison, I felt more energy there than I did at all through the castle and prison that yeah. Jean and I toured. I would agree. I would agree. And that includes me being ridiculous and lo loitering when we were down in the crypt. That <laughs> yes, was interesting true. to me. That was actually the first college in Oxford and it was St. George's College, which was all part of what had gotten blown up after the English Civil War or even before, I can't remember now, but there were only four columns left from the original crypt. That was actually where Geoffrey of Monmouth wrote the history of British kings was like a, right above our heads. And that is the first telling of the tale of King Arthur written right where we were at, which wow. was really cool to me. I'm like, okay. We did have some fellow tourists that were, well, why did they do that? Well, why? Well, why? <laughs> oh, and then with the whole, uh, is, it ha is it haunted? Is it haunted? Is it haunted? Oh, I'm going to stand over here because it's more haunted here than there. I'm like, shut up. He's it's, like, yes, it's no. haunted. Well, what do they do? Well, why do they do that? <laughs> oh. Like five-year-olds, yes, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 definitely. And, I, wow. I think I, and then we found that little uh, Victorian graveyard over at St. Thomas oh, the Martyr. Oh, yeah. That's right. Before that. While we were walking around, which was down the other way from where we were staying at, on the other side of Quaking Bridge. You people cannot resist visiting the no, dead of I wherever we go. I love graveyards, too. No. And this was a really <laughs> pretty one. It had lots of trees and 1,700, 1,800, 1,900 tombstones, and it was still in use. Yeah. Like it was still an active parish. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, and St. Thomas, was it Thomas Beckett? Yes. I think. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had established there is no St. Thomas more in, in England. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> well, unless you find the one Catholic church in town. Yeah. It was a very pretty little church. Yeah. And then we came back and scooped you up and we were on our way again. To the Ashmolean. Oh, that was so cool. Yeah, it's my favorite. Yeah. <gasps> That was a oh. wonderful exhibit. Oh. Wonderful. Which I told Jean, Valerie, but my pictures did not make it from my phone to my computer without Jerry's interference. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes, yeah, so everything. I still have some. My pictures stop, I think, after Oxford Castle. Wow. So I'll wow. have to go through my pictures. I don't think Jerry got yeah. to me. <laughs> no. I've got, I've got mine, but I don't have as many as, as Angela did because it's like, ooh, do I need to take pictures right. of all the same things? Because I was taking right. pictures of different things. Mm -hmm. I've got other pictures, but we've got, at least we doubled up on some of our important yeah. things. Yes. So you didn't get any of the Pompeii exhibit? No. 
I did not. Oh, jeez. No. What a great exhibit. It was fantastic. Oh, I really wish we had more time there. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, just in the European paintings. Jesus. Oh, I could have spent hours. I could have spent hours in that whole museum. And, and when we were waiting at the end where the uh, Arundel marbles. Yes. And yeah. that one hallway, that was just stunning as well. Oh, yeah. We found a huge yeah. Easter egg, that which we'll reveal at some later date. Yeah. Yes. 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 At yes. least yes. one, if not two. We found two Easter eggs, actually. Mm-hmm. So, but one one that's near and dear, really near and dear to our heart. Yeah. Um, and we didn't take a picture of that lady. Yeah. No. No. Uh, 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 I, that's what I thought. I'm like, no. I didn't even take a picture of that lady. Why are you messing with my pictures? Yeah, no, we did not. Oh, no, uh, yeah. I, yeah, no. Uh, yeah. I, I felt some sort of kinship to her. Pompeii's always really kind of pulled on me. So I don't know if it's past it's life regression. It's a weird thing because it's just like, it's one of those things. It's like your life is going good and then it's right. The whole place, man. This everybody. It no. doesn't care if you're rich, poor, whoever. Yeah. It's taking yep. you down. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that whole incident for lack of catastrophe for lack of a better word is is fascinating to just about everyone because life is just it's done it's over it's done it's frozen in time and i get the fascination but this was like more personal like i don't know if it's it's just a past time that i feel rooted in or or what it is but all the little things that we were looking at also really fascinated me like the jewels they found on her which were off to the side and even the one that she was holding i noticed that well there was a separate separate case of other things that were hers yeah. and then when they I think right after we got back they talked about finding a sorceress's stash of amulets or something in one of the villas that they had just excavated Yeah, and they were making some assumptions about that that really kind of drew me in too so I'm a weirdo people no just, that's interesting no. connection I felt the opposite yeah. I was coming up to the statue of Apollo and that the remains of the woman wasn't I couldn't see and I felt I thought it was the energy surrounding him that made me feel uneasy so I didn't even take a picture him and I quick darted to the left and then boom she was there I'm like oh my gosh she was and there. I didn't even stop yeah. to like look I'm like I, I, I gotta get out of here yeah <laughs> yeah that's what she like you pulled me aside you were like did you take a picture of her and I was like no are you yeah. crazy <laughs> yeah. like okay good <laughs> There was no way I would do that, but it was just like, it didn't feel right to just dart out either, even though I was like really kind of uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. But I was more uncomfortable just like not being there for at least they a moment always, or two. They always say a piece of your spirit lingers yeah. With, yeah. With, with your and last. That, I think that's know. what I felt was her, she was so terrified. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, well, and we'll, we do, have, I do have a photograph of the Apollo statue we'll, we'll toss up for you at some point in time, but Apollo is in one of his more terrifying guidelines. Forms, right? See, this is not the blonde, pretty god of music. He was kind of the terrifying god of the sun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who chased after nymphs and caused them to turn into trees because he was a fucking rapist. <laughs> Apollo. <laughs> Shame on you. Shame. Shame. <laughs> for shame, for shame. The Ashmolean yeah. was super awesome. That was great. And then we met Laura and Wendy and Sherry and, and Dora. Dora. And who else was there? I feel like there were us both there. Adri. Um, Adri. Adri. Yeah. Um, Sherry. Did I think it was Sherry? just, yeah, Sherry. Yeah, it was, it was just like Sherry. the eight of us, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 And then, uh, did we, we had meeting over Pimp's Cups. Lots of Pimp's Cups. At Pimp's the, King, yeah. the Pink Stucco Bar that is mentioned in a Discovery Witches book. Yes. yes. And. And uh, yes, we had drinks and then we had to find the bridge where Matthew stood over. Which it turned out we were there before. Yes. And we were there before. <laughs> and there's a lot of traffic on that bridge. So they must have stopped it. To uh, I realized the background scene was kind of both edges of that bridge merged yeah, together. Yeah, they're pieced together. It's stitched together. Stitched together. Yeah, they, they kind of did a background there. But when we figured it all out, it was clouds. such an aha moment. And we were all like, yeah. just so happy to stand there and hang out. Yeah, it's like, no, he's standing on this end. He he can't stand on this end. It was had to be this end. He's watching Diana go through this yeah. end, and we're like, we had that argument for like fifteen minutes. They were like, oh, I was yeah. both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then you could see where they were jogging to from the when you stood in the center of the bridge and looked, you could see exactly where they filmed the jogging scene. And then we were like, oh, shit, we were here before. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is where we wandered <laughs> yesterday. And then Laura ran down to the docks and took a picture of us waving over mm-hmm. the bridge where Matthew stood. So that was really cool. Yeah. And then we had drinks and snacks at, at the head of the river. Yes. Yep. And Which was good. Very good. And I had thought a good that time was good. And yeah. Just had a great time with Sherry and Dora. And I didn't want to say goodbye. Didn't want to say goodbye. And oh, eventually say goodbye. It's, it's always so hard to say goodbye to everybody. And then, we were going to uh, venture into Christchurch 
at dusk, but then they shut the doors on us. Yeah. Yeah. But we got, still got some beautiful pictures. Oh, yeah. So we did. Yeah. And then it was time for us to wander back home and pack up and go. Yeah. And we wandered back home to stumble upon a outdoor performance at 12th night. Yeah. Yes. Which was awesome. It was so cool, which was in the courtyard of uh, Oxford Castle. <laughs> kind of close. It kind of closed our shortcut through there. Yeah. So we had to kind of walk around. But that was okay because watching it, we watched a bit of it and it was fun. And then we had to call for a car and there was no cars available. They were all booked up. So we took the bus. We, were like, we took a bus. We took those kids' advice. Yeah, we, <laughs> we did. Took <laughs> <the bus. laughs> we took a bus the next morning to go to Heathrow and uh, we dropped Angela and Jean off and then it was my turn. Oh. And then the flight home. Yay. Yay. Ta-da. Uh, not so yay for us. Toronto was yeah. not, not a good experience, but no. And then, yeah, you guys kind of got hemmed up in Toronto and I got home fine, made it home fine, unpacked, going about my little life and got snared by the fucking hardest cold I've had in five years. Yeah. So <laughs> big fun. <laughs> big fun. I'm just now getting over it. Eh, whatever. The adjustment there it was easy. Why was it so hard coming home? I felt jet lagged for days. I even slept 11 I hours last night. It. Yeah. It takes like two weeks to get used to coming back west. Which is weird. Which is weird. Yeah. They always say it's harder to come back wow. than it is to go. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm like, I, you know, I switch shifts all the time, mm-hmm. but I prepare my body for it and I figured hey, I'll be fine. No big deal. And I didn't do any special preparations. And yeah, it kind of hit me like two days back. I was like, I want to go to sleep. It's only four in the afternoon. Why do I want to go to sleep? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember uh, the next morning after even just the airport, I'm like, I feel great. You know, I had my baton marching down Main Street. <laughs> and also like, the afternoon, I'm like, oh my God, I oh. feel horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. It's funny because my plane took off in uh, Heathrow at 1130 in the morning and I arrived in Seattle at 130 in the afternoon <laughs> the same day. Wow. <laughs> so... <laughs> My body had some adjusting to do. Yeah, I got a little, I'm sure it got a little bit rugged. I kind of got turned around and Asa was fucking around when he picked me up. He's like, oh yeah, let's take this way because I want to avoid traffic on the way home. I was like, no, just get right. me home. Just get me home it. now. <laughs> just get me home. Oh Lord. So that was a good trip. I'm glad it's going to be the U.S. Mm-hmm. next year. Praise Jesus. Oh, jeez. I mean, as as exciting as it was to go overseas. It's a beating. Be, it was a beat down. <laughs> it was a widow beat down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, and being on the same continent might give us will give us a little bit more flexibility to plan some extracurriculars. So yes, 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 we are planning a no shit demon hour. Yes, because it, we had a lot of big plans on the way over there, and we couldn't execute them the way we wanted because the situation, the timing, everything. So mm-hmm. it'll be easier for us yeah. next year. But yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed our re- little retelling. Yeah, you guys have any that's last thoughts before we? Oh uh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have to wait a whole year for more hugs. Yes, from Dora. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Yeah. I get to see Dora in a couple months. Oh, yeah, you do. You get Dora. <laughs> I know. Oh. And that conventicle you we invited yes, you to. That, that's, yes, that is on <laughs> the rally yeah. one. Yep. Oh my God, it's definitely. I on. have not Renee's one. Actually, I have Renee's not, going. I have not one <laughs> evening. I have two days with them. Oh wow! She gets to so go you, sit on the porch with the Disney birds and the yeah crickets. The Lord of the lovely yes. voice and her yes. whole cadre of <laughs> lovely singing animals. Yes. yes. <laughs> Okay, audience. Well, thank you for bearing with us. We're just going to close this out and say goodbye. Bye. Also, it's kind of fun. And we're so happy we got to travel. And try and to get everything. to next year's. Yes. And try to come to next year's. We want to hug you all. Yay. Yay. All right. So let's say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Bye. everybody. Demon kiss. And we'll talk to you next time with a chapter, baby. Yay. Yay. Yay.